Welcome to Ask Me Anything with GMHD.ie. I'm Adam Moynihan and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined on the line today by one of the top players in the country, uh, two-time All-Star, 2018 Young Player of the Year and uh, the current captain of the Kerry Senior Footballers, David Clifford. David, how are you getting on? All good, Adam. All good. Thanks for speaking to me today. No bother at all. Yeah, no bother. So basically, uh, we asked our followers to send in some questions. Um, they're very keen to find out what you're doing at the moment, how you're spending your time. Um, they have some great questions as well about your Kerry career so far and um, and your Kerry teammates. So we'll get straight into it. Our first question is from Daniel in County Cork. He wants to know, how are you training and staying fit during the lockdown? Um, yeah, I suppose it's probably it's probably one of the toughest things. Um, we we have a bit of a gym set up at the back there. We, we took a bit of stuff from Fossa and a bit of stuff from Kearns and things like that. So we have a small bit there, um, which is keeping us sticking over, to be fair. Darren O'Sullivan with, with MC Sport sorted me out with a few bits and bobs as well, so that's been very helpful. Um, and I suppose then it's just it's nearly like throwing it back to, to when you were a child, where it's it's just plenty of kicking out the back, messing around with the, the ball in the wall. I suppose like Paddy here with me as well, so it's a big help. Um, are a bit simple things like throwing down a bin 20 yards away from us and seeing how many it goes it takes to get it into it. Fairly simple things like that. It's it's been it's been different life, but it's been enjoyable. The next question comes from Paul in Castlebar. He wants to know, um, are you hopeful that the championship will be played before the end of the year? Um, yeah, I am, I think, yeah. Uh, I think the the news that came out last night from Leo Varica was, was probably uh, definitely positive anyway. Give us kind of a focal point, something to look forward to. Um, it was probably looking looking fairly unlikely for the last, for the last few weeks, but I think the talk about behind closed doors and different things like that, I suppose, it, it doesn't... I suppose, of course, it matters, but even just to have the chance to play anything behind closed doors or not would be, would be massive. But uh, no, I, I'm hopeful enough that there will, be, there will be a championship in some form. There has been a lot of talk about behind closed doors. I suppose some people are against it um, for, for various reasons. How do you feel about it? Would it be strange playing in front of an empty stadium? Um, of course, it would be strange, I suppose. You know, it's, it's, it's obviously what drives you on and, and you, get a, you feed off the crowd, you get a massive lift off the crowd at times. But... Um, I suppose, look, it's it's something where I think I've been thinking about it and, and a lot of fellas are of the belief that if you had a choice of playing behind closed doors or not playing at all, I think everyone would choose to play behind closed doors. Obviously, it's not the ideal scenario, but if that was the last resort, I think fellas have no problem with it. Helen from Ennis wants to know, um, are you keeping in touch with your teammates at the moment? Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're having, we're having the odd Zoom call here and there during different sessions and stuff like that. Um, uh, we are, yeah. Fellas are keeping in contact. I suppose fellas are trying to keep spirits high. Fellas are hearing different bits of news every day about whether we're going to be playing or not. So fellas are getting in touch over that. So yeah, we are keeping in contact, yeah. Peter from Killarney wants to know, uh, what do you miss most about football? <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. I suppose there's, there's, there's a good few things. Uh, the last month was, was very tough. The, the April where, where it would usually have been the club month where you have games week on, week off. Uh, I think probably the thing I miss the most about it is just trying to just getting down to training, having that bit of structure where you're meeting the same fellas, you're meeting, you know, you're having you're having your bit of crack and you're getting out and training. I suppose preparing for a game and, and looking forward to a big game. There's nothing better than than coming into a Thursday or Friday on a week where you where you know you have a big game the weekend. Um it really makes the week kind of pass a bit better and uh I think it's it, like like I said it's great to have something to look forward to. So that's probably the thing I'm missing the most is just preparing and, and looking forward to a game all week. James from Nina wants to know are you watching a lot of TV? Do you have any Netflix recommendations for him? Um, I um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't be a massive Netflix man. I watch a, a few bits here and there. Um, I have a pool table at home, so that takes up a lot of my time. Um, I oh uh, yeah, I do. I I watch a few different things on Netflix. I, my recommendations, tough one to know. I haven't watched anything major recently. The Michael Jordan documentary is good so far. Um, but no, I keep busy. To be fair, there's plenty to do. I'm trying to finish off a few bits here and there with college as well, so I'm I'm kept busy. Do you have any advice to give young footballers at the moment? That's a question from Evan in Tipperary. Uh, I do. I think, yeah, something like we said earlier, it's, it's, it's like for us as, as senior players, it's like us going back to, to when we were kids and nearly wanting to go back when we were kids where, where everything was kind of flowing. You just did whatever you, whatever you felt like. You played all day if you wanted to. Um, I suppose the one thing is you obviously do miss meeting your friends and you obviously do miss meeting your teammates. But I suppose the advice I give to them is, there's so many skills videos online at the moment. It's, it's massive. It's great. There's so many different challenges and things. I'd say try them out. Um, you know, try them out to actually keep your scores, test yourself, different things like that. I know it's uh, often you, you hear fellas talking about, you know, kicking the ball off the wall, and you think at times that sounds very, very boring. But 
it's it's this truth to be fair it's, it's what's going to make you improve i suppose so i'd say just put in the time to it so this one's affecting a lot of people at the moment um especially men how are you managing without your barber that's from paul and killarney not great as you can see there yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> you I, uh, it yourself or anything though no? No, I didn't. I said I'd leave it alone. I don't know what I'd be. I don't know if I have enough hair there to be shaving a ball. I don't know if my hairline hold up. Um, <laughs> but that's a good plan for soon. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, no, but as you can see, not great. No, I'll be, I'll be glad when it opens up. Lots of questions came in about your career so far. And uh, Park from Dublin wants to know how did you find out you were going to captain Kerry and what has it been like so far? Um, yeah, I suppose. There was a lot of speculation for a while, but Peter just gave me a call there a few days before it was announced. Um, just asked me, I suppose, would I be would I be willing to do it and did I want to do it? Um, and of course, I jumped at the opportunity. It's been great so far. We had a fairly successful start to the league, um, but I suppose, like I said, it didn't it didn't change a whole pile to to what I was doing individually or anything. I wasn't going to be changing the way I was or anything like that. I, I said it before in an interview that uh, there's a lot of leaders already in the Kerry dressing room and. Uh, I think they're still going to do their thing, but it has been a great honour even just to, just to lead the boys out in different games like that and things like that has been great. Luke from this poll has a question about earlier on in your career um, when you were kind of coming out of minor, there was speculation about the AFL in Australia. He asks, were you ever tempted to go to Australia and play in the AFL? Um, I, I, yeah, I think at the time there was a lot of talk about it, but I, I actually... Didn't probably didn't probably hear any of the talk or was never approached at any stage. It probably made my decision a bit easier. Um, I wouldn't say I was tempted. Obviously, it's probably a chance to play professional and different things like that. But it was just, I suppose it was the fact that I, I didn't know a whole pile about the sport. And again, like I said, not being approached made it, made it a fairly easy decision. Good question here from William Killarney. How do you handle defenders uh, who chat into your ear for the whole game? And do you ever talk trash back to them? Um... Yeah, I suppose it's it's probably the difficult one. Um, doesn't probably happen a whole pile in local games, or you you could often be friends with fellas, you know, fellas a bit better. But uh, yeah, it can happen. I don't think it happens too much. But um, what I try and do is I just try and mind my, my, my own business. Maybe um, I suppose I find that the more I, the more I interact with them, the the less I'm focused on the game. So I try and um, the advice I give to, to anyone that maybe struggles with it is just to I suppose just to try and. If if like it, it's it's a tough one because if it suits you to talk trash maybe back to them and if if that's something that's going to drive you on then I'd say I'd say do that but um, yeah. for me personally I don't find it it does me any favors so I try and I try and stay away from it. On a similar note, who would you say has been your toughest opponent so far at intercounty level? Um, yeah, there's been a few. I suppose I've marked fella from Clare. His his name is Gordon Kelly. Um, I've marked him for the last two years in a row. I've I, I've he's tough. He's very experienced. He's a uh, He's he's cute, we'll say, um, but he's yeah. no, he's probably been. I'd say he's been the toughest I've marked, to be honest. Yeah. A uh, question here from Roisin and Donegal. She wants to know if there was a transfer market in football, who would you sign for Kerry? Um, that's a tough one. I suppose we were lucky enough in Kerry. We, we we don't long for too many fellas in too many positions. Um, but I suppose I'd have to say someone like Michael Murphy. Um, I think I think if you asked anyone this question, he'd nearly be the answer that'd be given to you. Um. An unbelievable operator and has been for the last ten or fifteen years. So I'd go for him. Would he have been someone that you would have looked up to when you're learning the game and growing up yourself? Yeah, he would have definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose he probably made his debut. We'll say in around 2010 or 11. I'm not sure now, but uh, I suppose yeah, that's probably when, when at the age where I can I can say I was probably taking in most football and, and actually started to remember things about football, different things like that. But I suppose yeah. Michael Murphy definitely would have been someone that you try and you try and base your game off in some way. You'll have to be careful with this one now because um, there'll be some fellas who might be a bit offended if you don't pick them. But um, if you could bring back one ex carry player to play alongside, who would it be? Um, I would say it would have to be probably Colin Cooper in his days when he was playing number eleven with Kerry. I think any inside forward would. Uh, would, would wish to, that they could play with him there. I think it probably would make her job a whole pile easier. Soroka from Westmead wants to know who has been the biggest influence on your career to date? Yeah, I think I, I'd probably say my parents. Um, they, would have a, they would have massive interest in football, big football background. Um, so I think not in a way that was, that was pushy or forceful or anything, but they would have always guided us towards football and guided us towards sport as a whole. So I would say my parents, they'd be... 
they are probably similar to me. They enjoy talking about football. They enjoy going to games that, that we're not involved in and things like that. So I'd, I'd say my parents, yeah. Uh, Evan from Cork asks, is there a part of your game that you feel you need to improve on? Definitely, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think there's, there's, probably, there's probably plenty of parts, I suppose. For me, it's, it's always trying to keep my, my kicking up, um, trying to keep my weak side, keep, keep my weak side okay, probably even get a bit fitter, get a bit stronger. You can probably add to those things 5 or 10% every year. So I'd say they'd be probably the most important things. Are you superstitious at all before games? Do you go through any routines? Is there anything you kind of have to do before you go on the pitch? Um, I wouldn't be majorly superstitious. I like to my first kick, be it training or, or a game in the warm up. I'd like to go in nice and close in and around the penalty spot and just tap one over. I don't know why, yeah. but it just seems to ease yeah. me into it for some reason. It's a bad start if you miss the first one in the warm up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Joe from Dingle has a question about social media. He says you don't seem to be as active on social media as some footballers are. Is there a reason for this? Uh, not particularly. I suppose I just find that. When I am on social media, you just end up probably spending just too long looking at things that aren't really important, just watching videos and just, I, I just find that it just, it, it can waste a lot of your time. I, yeah, I suppose that's probably the only reason behind it, to be honest, yeah. Sophie from Kilkenny wants to know, um, what has been the highlight of your career so far? Um, I would say, of course, making my debut with Kerry in both the league and the championship. The league was against Donegal in a, uh, in Killarney, but I would say an early back before that would be probably the Hogan Cup in 2016. Um, with the same where we won, it was the first of the boys won the year after as well, which was great. But uh, I think 2016 was it was all of our first time playing Crow Park. We were a very close knit group. We had it was just a group of friends that had grown, I suppose, come up through the, through the ranks together. Um, and even just the way the game went, we were behind for, for large parts of the game and kind of turned it around. And I can still just remember the seemed like a massive crowd I'd say there was about 500, 500 people of a same crowd in one corner they were making noise as if it was the stadium was full but I'd say I, I'd probably go back as far as that yeah the, the Hogan Cup final and that was the day as well that you got pants on um, TG Carr yeah Mark Hartnett can get the credit for that one yeah <laughs> um, and of course a lot of those players went on to, to play for Kerry and play for East Kerry last year when you won the county championship as well yeah I think that was probably probably the the one thing with East Kerry that, that stood to us was the fact that, again, it was such a close-knit group. Um, fellas had grown up together. Fellas had played so much football together. Then, I suppose, we didn't have the usual, uh, I suppose, the usual teething period that a divisional side might have. We had already played a lot of football together, and so that kind of made things go seamlessly. Question here from Kira in Belfast. She wants to know, is there anything outside of football that you're not good at? Just plenty of things. Golf being one of them. Um, I played a bit of golf in the last few years, but... Uh, can be fairly hairy at times, but uh, it's, it's enjoyable to get out and just relax for a few hours. Paddy be decent enough, I'd say, would he? Paddy was good at golf, and yeah, when he was younger, he got down to, I'd say, he got down to about four or so. But he uh, don't think he could play to that now, even though if he probably thinks he still could, but I don't think so. <laughs> um, a question here from your club mate in Fossa, Kenneth Clifford. Um, he wants to know who's the best penalty taker you've ever seen. I don't know. Is he hinting that it was him? I played Jeez. soccer. He is hinting, he's hinting, yeah. I uh, yeah. Fossa played a game, I think it was against Nagale. This is years ago, it's even weird how I remember. But uh, Kenneth stepped up to take a penalty in area with two, I don't know, it was a two or three steps back and uh, rolled into the corner. So it's fairly impressive. I don't think I've seen anyone do it since. So I give that, I give that crown to Kenneth. Okay, I wouldn't be giving too much note to be honest. <laughs> no, I don't know. Outside of your own career, what's your most memorable sporting moment or your favourite sporting moment? That's from Neil in Langford. Jesus, yeah, I suppose t t the great thing about the, obviously the last few weeks have been tough, but the w one positive side of it is that we've seen so much action on TV, um, so many throwbacks to old games. My favourite moment, I suppose, I go away from football on this one, I'd be a big enough Celtic fan, so I'd say I just saw it there last week, uh, it would be Nakamura's free kick against United when Arthur Boric saved the penalty then from Saha straight after it, so I'd say, I'd say that night as a whole would be, would be up there. Uh, before I let you go, I have some questions about your, your Kerry teammates, and this is your opportunity to slay some fellas now if you want to. Sean from Killarney wants to know which Kerry player has the worst dress sense. Uh, it's a tricky one. Um, I will give it to Jason Foley for, for two reasons. First being that he puts a lot of effort into it, <laughs> and the second being that 
I've seen him wearing it three or four pairs of Yeezys that there's no way in the world that they're real. So I'll give it to Jason Foley just just for those reasons. <laughs> um, Sinead from Galway wants to know uh, which Kerry player is the strongest in the gym. Um, Kerry player strongest in the gym. I suppose I'd have to go with the likes of Tommy Walsh. Um, you could you you could nearly tell it by looking at him, but yeah, I, I'd say Tommy there. Connor from Navin asks, which Kerry player would you least like to get stuck in an elevator with? Tough one again. To be fair, no, I'd say I, I, I couldn't pick pick a fellow straight away, um, which is a good testament to the boys. I'd say Darren Moynihan for the reason that he'd have you worn out from talking about United and the fact that Spa are going to win the Intermediate next year, every year, is what he says. <laughs> Um, listen David thanks very much for speaking to me um, all the best and stay safe and I hope to see you back out on the pitch uh, before too long same to you Adam cheers man all the best man cheers <laughs>